Yay! It's here! Finally! 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 This is a special four-day class. This is a, a, a huge thank you um, to West, uh, West Hills College here in Colinga, California. It's about an hour and a half direct east of, of uh, San Luis Obispo. Interesting little college. I get these big smiles from the students over here. It's kind of like, yeah, it's the best college in the world. <laughs> So, and I've got a lot of young people here in the classroom. So this is good. This is very, very good. We have more people attending. They're going to be coming a little bit later on. So, so the few that's here don't feel too lonely. So I am Stephen Burns, and I will. I am a digital artist, and I'm going to share with you a little bit as to who I am. And I'm going to go and grab my website. Let's go up here. I'm going to kind of share the screen here with you. Um, and let's go and share. Now, once again, I'm going to minimize this here. Once again, make sure Blender 3.2.1 is downloaded. They just updated this a few days ago. Now, for those who are already here, um, you've already got Blender installed. You don't have to worry about that. For those at home, if you don't have it installed already, I'm assuming you've already done this before class, um, go ahead and do that now. Uh, an amazing piece of software. It's going to pretty much, uh, it's taking the, the 3D industry by storm. And it's challenging Maya. It's challenging ZBrush. It's challenging Cinema 4D. Um, and it's good. It's darn good. I'm a Lightwave guy. So I do ZBrush. I do Lightwave. I taught Maya. Um, but I'm, I'm amazed of what, of what Blender can do. And we're gonna we're gonna look at Blender from the standpoint of kind of telling a story a little bit, and we're gonna start today by taking a photograph, and we're gonna actually build a three D environment based on that photograph. All right, um, and then but we're gonna do a lot more. We're gonna we're also gonna build other assets that can be used in gaming, that can be used for um um you know building a 3d uh, you know virtual world all that stuff so it's gonna be fun now let me share with you who i am some of you know who i am probably most but in case you don't totally know who i am here's my site chromeillusion.com what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this link i'm going to go back and find um there's my zoom cool and let's bring that back real quick. Let's go to my Zoom link here. I may have to minimize some stuff. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think the... Oh, that's really annoying now. I minimized it now. I can't get it back. All right. So there we go. Zoom link. Zoom is there. There it is. That's what I want. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and there we go. And if I, I'm trying to bring back my interface here, but it's being kind of, there it is right there in front of me. So I'm going to double click it, maximize it. Oh, it's not doing it. I want to go here. There we go. Thank you. All right. I'm going to put in the link for my website for your convenience. I'm still getting used to Zoom. I'm I'm used to working with StreamYard. StreamYard is a lot easier, a heck of a lot easier. Um, so there we go. So there's my link. I'm also going to give you the link to my Behance site, all right? And we're going to go take a look at that real quick. Let's start with my, my site. I'm going to just pull this on down up here to the top. Go to my galleries. Definitely check out the books and DVDs. These are the books that I've written. I'm an author in addition to a digital artist. Here are the books I've been involved in. All having something to do with 3D and Photoshop. All of it. Okay. I'm going to also take you to another site called Behance. So if you all have the Creative Cloud, you also have access to Behance. Behance is Facebook for artists. Okay. Here's my Behance site. 
here's some of my work. Let's go over here to my um, illustrations. And you can see examples of how I utilized 3D and Photoshop. Okay, let's kind of bring this on back. I don't know why it took me there. It's annoying. There we go. Oh, that's that's the photograph. I want to go over to the. Let's take a look at this one. Three D Photoshop for Create Professionals. That's one of my last books I've written. All this is done in three D. Inside of Photoshop. So we we'll get to do some cool stuff like this. And with Blender. I'm going to give this is for people who have no experience for Blender. So if you have a, if you have a little bit of experience with Blender, bear with me. Um, I want to get everybody up to speed. These are examples of uh, now these are examples of, of, of 3D done in Photoshop. Photoshop's 3D uh, platform is not as intuitive as Blender. Blender is much much more pow powerful. Um, I'm going to show you some other examples. Here we go. 3D illustrations in general. These illustrations are also all in my books. It's a combination of 3D objects that I built in a, in a third-party 3D program and then import, imported them in into Photoshop. Right? So that's the behance.net forward slash Stephen Burns. And you guys can come, there, come back and kind of, you know, browse on your own time. But I wanted you to be aware that that's something there for you to kind of take a look at. All right. Audience, what was that? The home audience doesn't see the website. The home is they're not seeing the website? All right. That's all I mean. Are you seeing my screen? Did my screen stop getting shared? I think so. We see you. All right, you see me. There, there we, we go. go. Now you can know, share. So it took you guys that long to tell me? Well, we just enjoy hearing your voice. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good too. <laughs> All right, let's go back and view it again. All right, my website. Here we go. I'm going to go back to. Uh, let's go back over to my. Is it this one here? There we go. That's my personal website. Chromeillusion.com. All right, go to the books and DVDs as I started to talk about earlier. All right, those are the books I've been involved with, about eight of them. Or so, every chapter is a complete tutorial on how to create something that's telling a story, utilizing 3D and Photoshop together. Okay. Um, Take a look at this. I'll go to another gallery here. This is kind of one of my galleries here. I think you'll be uh, a little interested to take a look at this. It's all examples of what I've done in Photoshop and or Blender in combination. All right. All right. And then I wanted to also share with you my Behance site. I've also uh, booked the link, put the link in there. And let's go back and let's see, did I lose the Behance site? Wow. Everything's kind of jumping around on me today. So www.behance.net forward slash Stephen Burns. There we go. And we're going to go over here to my Adobe Twitch projects. And you kind of get to see how I'm utilizing 3D with Photoshop to tell a story. This year, my presentation for Blender 3D modeling for telling a story for Comic Con has been accepted. So I will have my, my very first Comic Con official panel on Friday. I think I believe that's the 22nd for Comic Con at 4 to 5 p.m. So all of these here, 3D objects, the, the buildings were, were digitally composited with photographs, digitally painted, lighting, 
fog and mist. The spaceship is, is created in 3D, integrated inside of Photoshop. We come down to the next one, another example of 3D. The human character is 3D. Everything else is painted in. And here's another example of kind of a sci-fi world. And they're not really complete yet, but it gives you an idea, a little bit of an inspiration of, of, of where you can go with your own work. And another example of 3D in Photoshop for telling a story. I digitally painted the landscape, brought in the 3D planet with the rings. Um, and then here I built the 3D starship in Blender. And then the meteor and the planet is also 3D built in Photoshop 3D. And then with digital painting and compositing, pulled it all together for telling a story. Okay, cool. So let's, um, that's enough about me. Um, I am going to move this up and out of the way so I can find it next time. And we're going to get into Blender. Okay, let's go into Blender. Now, um, I'm going to minimize this. Okay, so that's not in your way. I'm going to do the same thing here. There we go. And we're going to go have some fun. All right. Now, Blender 3D. I'm going to kind of give you kind of a, a, a nice, easy to understand, kind of the lay of the land of the 3D program. Now, what you're looking at here, I want to get, I want to get you guys, I want to get everybody started with the preferences. So I want everybody working with me when I'm, when I'm creating. Okay. So we're going to go in and like all the digital programs, you have preferences to set up the program the way that you guys are going to like to work. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to give you my recommendation and then um, you're going to follow along here. So with Blender open, the preferences tab is in the same place that the Photoshop preferences tab is in. And that's under the edit menu preferences. So if you're in Blender, you go to your edit menu and you go down to preferences. All right. So we're going to go over these little tabs here. We're going to go down through each one. And I want to make sure that we're all up to speed here. Um, for the first one, which is interface, we're going to leave everything default. We're not going to do anything there. Now click on themes. We will also leave that default. We will do nothing there. We're going to go down to viewport. And what we're going to do is that so far we're going to leave default. Now there's something I'm going to forget, but we'll come back and correct it later. Lights, we're going to do the same thing, leave everything default there. Click on editing below the lights. That's going to stay the same. Let's skip past the animation and skip past the add-on. We'll come back to the add-ons in just a minute. Go to the input. And I want you to be able to um, emulate. I want to emulate the three-button mouse. So emulate numpad. Okay. Now, for, view, for anybody who's using a laptop, most 3D programs, including Blender, require that you have a separate numerical pad, a full featured keyboard uh, to work with. In other words, your numerics are over, over to your right, and then your, your keyboard keys over to your, to you know, dominating the rest of your uh, a pad. If you have a laptop, a laptop keyboard where you do not have a separate numerics, on the right hand side, you're going to click emulate numpad. By default, this emulate three button mouse is unchecked. I want everybody to check that. Okay, you're going to see why in just a minute. 
The next thing I want you to do is to go down to the navigation button on the left hand side right below your input. And something that I find very handy, the orbit around selection is by default unchecked. Check that. And if anybody has any questions, stop me anytime and ask. We'll get, we'll get a nice little dialogue going. Go to your key map. And what I want you to do is on the right hand side, closer to the bottom, by default, the tab for Pi menu is unchecked. I want you to check that. Go down in your system right below your key map, map tab. And here you're going to find, you want Blender to recognize your graphics card and your processor. I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. If that's the case, click the CUDA tab, which is proprietary to NVIDIA, and then make sure both of your options are checked for your graphics card as well as your processor. If you don't have this option, that means you don't have an NVIDIA card. Now, for those in the classroom, do you have those options there? No, I clicked on it and it's not compatible. It's not compatible? Okay, then don't worry about it. I always assume that schools will put NVIDIA cards in system systems, but not always. All right. And then the other two we're going to ignore. All right. Now, I want to show you what we've done. Go to the X on the top right-hand corner and click the X button. It's automatically applied. And I want to show you how to quickly navigate. Now, by default, everybody has a cube in, in the middle of your screen, correct? Good. All right. I don't have one for a reason, and we'll talk about that reason in just a minute. So what I want you to do is we want to add 3D objects to our scene, like maybe a circle or a, or, or a cube or, or a, a ball. And there's a sh we're going to be using shortcuts a lot in Blender. So the first shortcut I want you guys to understand is, and when you're working, by the way, your, your, your mouse hand, right or left hand, whatever that will be, will always be on your mouse. Your other hand will always, always be on your keyboard. You're going to be working shortcuts. The first shortcut I want to teach you guys is how to go get 3D objects to put them inside a blender. And what you do is you hold the shift key down and then the A key. And you're going to get this, this menu that pops up. And watch me first, if you like, okay? Watch me first. Shift A, you're gonna have all your different, um, you move your mouse over, you have all your different 3D objects here, but what you want, watch me first, and, and also be aware, I'm recording the class, you don't need to take notes. If you take notes, you will miss it all. So no note taking. That goes for online people too. So I'm recording everything. So I'm going to mesh, and then just to the right of mesh, I want you to put in a cube, okay? So left click on cube. Now, you guys, if you already have a cube, don't do it. Just use the one that's there. I want you to be aware of how to go get your 3D objects. I'm doing it because I don't have one there. So now I'm up to speed with you guys. All right, so what did we do when we made those changes and preferences? This is how you navigate. Hold down the Alt or Option key, and I say Option for those who are on a Mac. Left click and drag, and that will rotate around your scene. And you can watch my screen if you like. Alt key, hold, hold down the Alt key, and then left click and drag your button to rotate. And if you have problems, have a question, shout it out. So I need communication is, is critical. All right. The next thing I'd like you to do is I want to teach you how to zoom in and out. That shortcut is, just like the last one, hold down the Alt key. Just listen to me first and then watch me and then you get to do it. Hold down the Alt key and then add Shift. Alt and Shift held down together. 
left click and hold and drag up and down and that will zoom in and out. Within the next hour, you guys are going to get so used to using these shortcuts, it's going to be second nature. So we're going to practice this. Rotate with Alt only. Practice. I want you to practice this. Alt only with Rotate. Hold down the Shift key to zoom in and out. Alt, Rotate. Shift to zoom in and out. Or adding Shift to the Alt or Option with zoom in and out. All right. Our Final navigational shortcut is we want to pan the object. What if I want to move it to the right or to the left or up or down? So the same thing. Hold down the Alt key first. That's the common the common denominator. So Alt or, Alt or Option key. Now add Shift to the Alt and drag up and down, right and left. Oh, you know what? I may have given you a wrong. I, I may have, I, I I think give, I gave you a wrong shortcut. Zooming in and out. Did I say did I say control and alt for zooming in and out? Hold down control and alt. So alt is rotate. I meant to say control. I said shift, I think. Sorry guys. So alt and control zooms in and out. And if it wasn't working for you, you should have told me. So this is a test for you. Well, I'm just being patient, Steven. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm talking to the people in the classroom here. Because it wasn't working for them, and they weren't saying anything to me at all. <laughs> yeah, you busted. <laughs> so zoom in and out. Okay, control and alt. Now, to, to pan is alt again and shift. The common, the common denominator is alt your option, and then control for zoom, shift for pan. That's it. Pra I want you to practice that. I want, I want this to be second nature. So if you need to zoom in real close to somewhere real fast, and you want to zoom around it like that and move around, you should be able to do that very, very quickly. Right? Alt, Option, Rotate, Shift is our pan. Control and Alt is Zoom. They're all together? Is that all working for everybody? Okay, cool. All right, now I want to add in some more options, some preferences for Blender. So we're, again, we're working on the same page. The reason you're able to do these shortcuts is because when we went to the edit menu and preferences, I think it's under the input, um, we checked the emulate three button mouse. That is why we're able to do those shortcuts. Now, what you're going to do next is go back to your Preferences menu, menu, go to Edit Preferences, if you're not there already, and you're going to go to Add-ons. So click on Add-ons. This is where you, where you get to add in all the plugins, and there's these myriad of plugins out there for Blender. There's a lots of plugins for Blender. Okay? Now, what I want you to do, we'll start with the first one. There's so many plugins in here, you can't always remember what, you know, where, where to go find it. So right up here in the search bar, one of the plugins I want you to put in here is called Bool Tool, which short, short for, for, shortcut for Boolean. Boolean means when you cut something, cut one object out of another object or add another object to another object, those are Boolean commands. So we're going to put in B-O-O, -O. and if you notice, mine is already checked. If yours is not checked, when bool, object bool tool comes up, make sure it's checked. And tell me when you're done. You good? Okay. All right. So the next one we're going to put in there, put in extra, E X. T R and you want the add mesh extra objects and go on and add in the curves extra objects too.
There's another one. I'm forgetting the name of it, but I'm going to have to go. Let me back out. Of, just, stay, just stay in your preferences. I'm just going to get out of preferences so I can remember what it is I'm looking for. Um, in the edit mode, it was right click. The next one is loop tools. That's the next. So I want you guys to do a search for loop. L O O. Loop tools. Because that's not activated by default. So I'm going to go up here and put L O O. Mesh loop tools. Make sure that's checked. We're good. Cool. All right. Um, let me, if you want to see all the plugins, you just simply click the little X button on the right hand side of that search bar and you, you can see all the other plugins in here. I'm going, I'm going to do a quick little uh, look, a scan. Um, there are some I want you to add in here, but for our purposes, I don't think we need to worry about them. Um, we got the loop tools. If I forget anything, we can always come back. All right. Um, do me a favor. Put in there UV magic. Do a search for UV magic. UV magic. Make sure that's checked. So... I think we're done. We're not really done. I mean, you, you're gonna. There's gonna be plugins. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna remember later on. But we'll go back. You, at least you know now how to add additional functionality to Blender. So plugins is adding additional functionality. Okay, making making your life easier for you when you're doing 3D modeling. So are you guys kind of ready to kind of learn some of the basics of, of of creating things in 3D? Excited. Okay. Here we go. We're going to use this cube that we have in front of us. Okay. Now, we added in a shortcut. And tab, that, that shortcut with tab menu brings up, the, brings up the pie menu. Hold down your tab menu, your tab button. You should see this. Okay. In Blender... You have two modes you're going to be working in. One is your object mode. The other is the mode where you actually get to go, you know, edit your 3D object to create something out of it. It's called your edit mode. All right. So by default, you are in object mode and you're going to get this orange outline around your object, right? But all 3D objects come with points, edges, and faces. And I want to be able to go in there and edit those points, edges, or faces. Well, how do I do that? Hold down your tab key and your keyboard. And then take your mouse and hover, hover over edit mode. And then left click onto edit mode. Now watch me and I'm going to let you do it. If I take my cursor and, and put it outside my object and click and drag over an area, it's showing you what's being selected. So if I take my cursor and put it outside of any area, I can click and drag it. It will select an area. Now let's understand how this is created. There are three different modes that we're going to work in. Point mode, edges, and faces. You see right up here in the top, right below the window menu, the first one is point, that little dot there. I'm going to show you a shortcut on how to get this, but for right now, just watch me. If I click and drag over any, any edges coming together, what you're seeing is a point that's joining those edges together. And this top portion is made up of four points. I can click and drag and get only two points or I can get all of them. Is that making sense? I can do that for edges too. Look, right next to the point, I can go to edges. And if I click on the edges, I can do a single edge 
or I can do multiple edges. All right. If I want to add ob edges to the two that I've selected, holding the shift key down allows me to add additional edges to what I've selected. Is that making sense? Now, the last thing we have is the face editing mode. The third one here. Click on the face. Any face that I click on, just practice that. It'll highlight that face. And faces are ideal when they're, when they're made up of four-point geometry. So four-point polys is what we call this. Is that making sense? All right, let's create something. Let's practice something. Okay, um, the shortcuts for going to points, edges, and the faces. That's number one, number two, and number three. On your keyboard, right above your numbers, right above your letters. So watch me. The number one key puts me in edge, it puts, puts me in point editing mode. Hit the number two key, that puts me in edge editing mode. Hit the number three key, that puts me on face editing mode. Does that make sense? It's a fast way to get there than going up here and clicking on the little buttons. And that's the way we're going to work. All right. Now, whenever we're going to create spaceships or, or, or Thor's hammer, I tell you what, just for the beginning, kind of get you guys warmed up, we'll create Thor's hammer. How's that sound? All right, that's a simple one. Now, let me give you some basics. Say, for example, I want to add more geometry to this. And we'll go to the side. I'm going to click one side. I have a feature called inset. And what that does, it takes a current face and it insets the exact same shape within itself. Now watch me, I'm gonna let you guys do it next. Hit the I key. Now this is where it's tricky because most 3D software, when you hit a command, it wants you, other, other, other 3D software wants you to left click and drag. In Blender, you don't. You, you, you just hover the mouse and you see it's scrolling along the, the face normal of that rectangular shape. Then when I get it to the size that I want it to be, I can left click and that commits to changes. Get to that point. So we're just doing a little practice here, that's all. And anybody online, if you have questions, shout it out. Yes, could you repeat those steps again, please? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. All right, I'm going I'm to back up. Control Z is undo, by the way. I'm going to hit Control Z. If you click anywhere in this, in this space, that'll deselect it. All right, so I'm going to select my, my surface. And all I'm going to do is hit the I key, the first letter of inset. Hit the I key on the keyboard and release. Now take my mouse and just hover it, move it in toward the shape, and adjust it to the size that I want. And left click commits it. That's all I want you to do. How that? Did that help? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So is everybody's there? So you get to just kind of play with that a little bit. All right, so everybody watch me next. Another thing we can do is we can add bevel. I can bevel edges. Well, actually, before I bevel the edges, let me show you how, how to add <clears throat> additional geometry to your object. Watch me, and I'm going to let you guys do it next. 
Control R allows me to add what's called an edge loop. It's adding a loop cut around these adjoining safe surfaces. Just watch me. I'm watching your eyes, so I know you're not watching up here. <laughs> now watch this. I'm gonna take the middle, the middle roll but roll mouse or the, the, the middle wheel on my mouse and scroll it up, and I can add in more cuts. If I scroll it back the other way, I can take out the cuts. So I want you guys to do something like this. Then when you're done, left click and hold, left, left, left click, and notice that you can still move it around and the commit to changes, left click again. And that will commit your changes. So once again, I'm going to undo. I'm getting a, a, a surface area where the, where the adjoining surfaces are all connected together. And I'm going to hit Control R. And wherever you place the mouse, that's going to be perpendicular to wherever you place the mouse. It places a cut that's perpendicular to it. So if I pull this here, now the roll, the scroll button on the mouse, scroll it upward, adds more cuts. Scrolling it back takes away cuts. Give that a try now. Now all this is going to be critical when we're going to start building an architectural scene. I'm assuming everybody online is okay. I'll say yes because no one's saying anything. All right. Let's do something different. It's zooming in and out. Okay. All right. So then if you watch me, if I'm going to apply this technique, I'm going to say Control R, right? Just Command R on the Mac. And then wherever you place your mouse, that's where it's going to place a perpendicular cut. And then roll your mouse up. You're welcome. So I want everybody to put in cuts going this way now, too. So you're getting a grid pattern. See, all this is going to be applicable to what we're going to be doing next. How are we doing back there? Pretty good? Good? Great. We'll go 10 minutes more and then we'll take like a 10 minute break or something. All right, everybody watch me. So it's important to you, everybody, I want all eyes watching me here before, before you do the technique. Now, what more can we do with this? Say, for example, 
I want to extend, make a building, extend to make, extend to make, make it look like a building. So I want to select particular faces on here and extend that shape upwards. So for example, I'm hit the number three key on the keyboard. If I hit the number three key on the keyboard, what does that mean? What was that? Ex excellent. It's face editing mode. So I'm going to hit number three. Now watch me. I can do this. And what if I, what if I want to deselect some, some, some faces? Hold the control key down and click on it, and that will deselect those faces. Now, once the faces are selected, you're supposed to be watching me, not, not playing. Watch me on this one. Once, actually, I'm gonna do one more. I'm, I'm, I want to select additional faces. The shift key I'm gonna hold down and add one more in there. Now, watch this. If I want to inset in, what's the shortcut? Excellent. I. Now, I want to do something different. I want to extrude it up. What do you think the shortcut for that is? Excellent. E. E. Boom. And, we're, and then take it where I want it to go and click. Now, if I want to see everything, here's another shortcut. Hit the home button on your keyboard, and that'll zoom back and show you everything. Hitting the home button. It's a quick way of seeing everything at one time. And I can move it. I, I like to, you know, alt, zoom it around. Try that next. Select, select any shape you want on the top, and then extrude and extrude it up. And I'm keeping this really simple right now. There's a lot of little panels and stuff that are popping up that I could bring your attention to, but we'll do that later. Remember, keep one hand on your keyboard at all times. Utilize those shortcuts, number one, the number two, the number three. I for inset, E for extrude. So these simple little commands is what you're going to be doing for your entire 3D career. Inset, extrude, bevel. Inset, extrude, bevel. Okay, so now let's do something different. Everybody watch me. All right, so what I want to do is I want to bevel this long edge here. Are eyes, all eyes up here? No. So watch it there. <laughs> okay, so I want, I, want, I want to extrude this side here. And now next year, I want to bevel this side and this side. What we're going to do is we're going to apply what's called a chamfer, which is nothing more than a bevel that's on the edge. So what's the shortcut for going to my edge selecting tool? Excellent. Two. Number two, I'm going to click this. I can do it the easy way by, by just clicking and dragging over it like this or lining it up with the screen properly. So I can click and drag like that, and I get that a whole edge. Now I'm going to go get the other side. Shift key to add to it. And I'm going to do is I'm going to give a shortcut for bevel. Now you're probably thinking, oh, that's easy. That's the B key, right? Close. Control B or Command B if you're on a Mac. So control B, click it, now watch what happens. If I pull it, see, 
Now watch, watch closely. I can pull it to determine how far I want it to bevel, but say I want to go right about this far, but what if I want that to be a rounded edge, right? Your middle row, your middle scroll wheel, scroll it, boom, 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 and make as many edges that you want. Left click to commit the changes. Give that a try. Okay, now, right now, you guys are probably feeling like Steve hasn't shown us enough yet. Actually, I have. And I'm going to show you how to apply it. What was that? Okay, what's your question? On building, the, on beveling the edges. Okay, watch me. I'll do these two edges here. So what you can do, I'm gonna go to Edge Editing Mode, number two key on the keyboard, and I'm gonna just select them individually, just to, cause it's convenient. And I don't want this one, so I'm gonna Control Key and deselect that one. All right, you know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't we select this entire beveled edge? So, I'm going to go ahead, ahead and, <clears throat> and select that whole beveled whole edge along the entire top of that building, okay? Now, all you're going to do is this. Control B and pull it out. See, it, it remembered my last setting, right? With the scroll wheel. Well, I can scroll the wheel back or forward to get what you want. Does that make sense? Anybody have questions? Yeah, control B. Now here's, 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 here's another way. See, when I, when I left click to commit my bevel, Right down here in the bottom is my numerics pebble, be, uh, numerics numerics pad for the bevel. It's it's minimized. If I click that little triangular check marks to the left of the bevel bevel, here's a numeric pad for that bevel. So if I want a stronger bevel, the width, I can adjust it that way. How many segments? That determines how 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 smooth of a round edge you're going to get. Now, here's the caveat. Here's 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 the problem with it. Once you click away, like I just did, it goes away and you're done. So if you want to if you want to use that numerics pad, make sure you use it before you left click anywhere. Did that answer your question? All right, let me do this. Let me um, let me pause the recording. Start recording. Back from break. All right, I want everybody to go back to your preferences very quickly, and go to your edit menu. Go to your preferences. And go to add-ons. Make sure add-ons is selected. There is an add-on that's very important. It's called Images from Planes. So type in IMAG. And the, the import, export, Images from Planes, as Planes, have that checked. That's going to be important for, for our next exercise here. Okay, and then exit out so we can get out of there. I'm going to go minimize um, 
And now we're going to go have some fun. All right. Now, so far, we've been working in editing mode, right? This is how we build things. So everybody just kind of watch me here real quick. So if I wanted to really kind of build something kind of cool, I can say, all right, um, maybe what I'll do is I'll hit Command R, like I showed you. Maybe I'll add a couple of loops in there. Left click to commit that, right? And you can see the edges that I have to, I have to work with. Maybe what I'll do is I'll grab all this geometry right there, but I want the faces. So number three key on the keyboard, select those faces. And then maybe what I want to do is I want to inset this in, right? So I'll hit the I key and inset it in like this. And then click it to commit my changes. Well, maybe what I'll do next is I will extrude that in like that, you know, and start creating this very interesting looking shapes coming in here. Maybe I did it too much, right? Maybe I, I'm going to hit the E key again, but I want this just a little bit, just a little bit, not as much as I had before, right? So we, now we're starting to make some interesting shapes out of here. Maybe um, what I'll do is I'll go grab all this, like so, hit the I key, pull that down, hit the, hit the E key, and for extrude, and make some more, you know, surface details that way. Um, it can go in a million different ways, right? I can select these little shapes here, E key, extrude it up. I can come into here um, and then say Command R, do a bunch of these like this, right? And then what I can do is, if I want to select all the adjacent polys within that loop, Hit the number three key for the face editing mode, and I can just double click on it. And double clicking on it selects that entire loop. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, maybe what I'll do is hold the shift key and double click each and every, every other every other one. Make sure I oh I didn't want to do that one. Go back. There we go. Okay, there we go. See that? Well, what can I do from here? Well, what I could do is I can extrude this outward. So if I Alt or Option E, I can say extrude along the normals. I'm going to talk about the normals. And then I hate it when I do that. There we go. Here's another way. This little button on the left-hand side, it's a square with a little bit of a green shape. Don't worry about it for right now. Just watch me. We'll come back. I click that button. It gives me a, a, a little handle. When I drag that handle, right? But what I want to do is make sure that extrude along the normals is selected so that it extrudes that whole face in or out. I'm going to go in like this, right? Okay, so what are we talking about by normals? The normals is that is is that perpendicular direction. Well, that direction is perpendicular to your face. If I select that face there, if I'm going to extrude along a normal, look at that line is completely perpendicular to the surface of the face. That means it will extrude it in that direction. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, if I come down here and grab that face and this face, and I want to extrude it along the normals, it's going to extrude it along that direction, right? That's perpendicular to it. The tool that I'm using is kind of right toward the center here, dead center. It's this little box, if you click and hold on it, that little triangle on the bottom right-hand corner, just like in Photoshop, is telling you that there's more tools inside. So click and hold, and you get all these options that's true along the region, the manifold. You want to make sure along normals is selected. Then that way it'll honor that entire shape. So if I come over here, and let's say I want to grab 
all that and that and I want to extrude that out it'll extrude it out along its normals and I can inset it as well all right so this is what I'm gonna do it's what I want everybody to do hit the tab key go to object mode what is object mode compared to editing mode object mode is where you're gonna animate your object you're not you're done editing your object um, now all you're gonna do is you're gonna start to edit some special effects some animation to it we're not gonna do that for this object we're gonna delete it to delete an object now take note that we've been working here in this 3d interspace interface over to the right you will notice right up here um, they're called collections but basically, this is where all your 3D assets and objects exist. This is like your layers. So this one, the cube, is what I have targeted. It's what I have selected. If I click off it, see it goes away. It's no longer highlighted. That means it's no longer selected. I can select it there, right into the layers area, or I can select it here, right on the interface. Is that making sense? I only have one thing there, but I'm, we're going to do multiple things in just a minute. Um, you don't have what I have, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rid of this one by deleting. I want everybody to delete their cube that's there. So to do so, hit the X key on the keyboard and just left click on delete. It's gone. Okay. All right. Now we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to do something new. I want you guys to get familiar with lights and how to, how to navigate things inside of Blender with multiple objects, not just one. All right. Notice that little circle dead center. That's called your 3D cursor. Whenever you, whenever you tell Blender to bring in a 3D object, it will always put that 3D object at the dead center of that cursor. The cursor is at is at the world zero coordinate. So X, which is your which is the green line, Y, I'm sorry, the red line, X, red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. Red, green, blue, X, Y, Z. Red for 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 X, green for Y, and B for blue, which is Z. So Y, so X is going right to left, Y is going in and out, your Z axis is going up and down. All right, let's bring in some objects here, guys. I want you guys, shift A, go to mesh, and bring in a cube. All right, now over on the left-hand side, you have your navigational tools, right? You've got your pan tool, your rotate tool, your scale tool, and right down here is your transform tool. Select that transform tool. And notice you got your transformation symbols dead center of your 3D object. Click on the red arrow, click and hold, and just drag it. See, it restricts it to the, to the X axis only. Just move it over to the right. Now, if you want to see everything inside, hit your home key on the keyboard. or zoom it out. You know how to navigate. So command or control, Alt and Option held down together, zooms out, and again, Shift and Alt or Option held down together, pans. So just kind of navigate around your scene. Let's add in another 3D object. Let's add in a, a cylinder. Shift A, go to Mesh, add in a cylinder, and then Offset the cylinder to the side, somewhere to the left. The next thing you're going to do is add in a, a sphere. So you want to add in the UV sphere. It's called UV sphere. So mesh, shift A, mesh, UV sphere, and let it 
sit right in the center. All right. Next, we're going to add one last thing. We're going to add in a plane. That's going to be your ground plane. Shift A, mesh, the very first one plane, select it. It puts the plane right down. Now, I want you guys to make the plane bigger. So watch me, and this is a shortcut. I want to scale it much bigger so that everything sits on the plane. What's the first letter of scale? S, that's gonna be your shortcut. Hit the S key, now scroll your mouse to the right and make it bigger like this and then left click to commit your changes. Okay, you guys ever get to this point? How about you guys online? How you doing? We're just bringing in 3D objects. Good? All good. Okay, cool. Now, um, I'm going to show you another shortcut. We have, in addition to our perspective view, where we can see things 3D-wise, we can see things orthographically, which means only from the side view, only from the top view, or only from the front view. And to do that, the, the, the numerical keys on the right-hand side of your keyboard, the number one key is your front view. The number three key, because they're all odd numbers, is your side view. And if you want to see it from the top view, it's the number seven key on your keyboard, and that's your top view. And if you want to get out of that view and go back to perspective view, it's simple. Hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, and just left click and drag it and it takes you right back to perspective view. So one for, for the front, three for the side, seven for the top. Practice that now. One, three, seven, one, three, seven. Someone's calling, it might be a student. No, it isn't, it's spam. Spammers get deleted. One, three, seven. You're going to use that religiously. All right. So what I'd like you to do is hit the number one key on your numeric side of the keyboard. And I want you to adjust your, your cube, your sphere, and your um, cylinder so that the bottom touches the plane. So if I come over, now, now take a look at this. Look on the right-hand side, there are your 3D objects. If I start with the cube, click on the cube, I can go and, and drag the cube so the bottom is just touching just the top of the plane. If I go to the cylinder, click on the cylinder, or I can physically click on the object right here in the scene. So I want you to have that, get to that point. If you hold the Alt Option key, you can rotate this out. You can get to see what you're looking at here. 
Now, on your right-hand side in your, your 3D assets view here, you, you get to see your cube, your cylinder, and your plane, your sphere. Do you guys also see a, a light source, like a light, a 3D light? Yes, no, or maybe so. Yes, you do? And everybody online sees that as well? Yep. Okay, great. All right. Here we go. I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, in what you're looking at here, I want to get these out of the way real quick. Pull that on down. All right. So your assets are here. I can group those together, just like in Photoshop. In Photoshop, we have a layer grouping. I can group these. these. These are nothing more than 3D layers. So if I select a cube, hold the shift key, and select the sphere, to select them all, the shortcut, and, you, and here's the trick here, your mouse has to be hovering and pointing at the 3D objects. Once that's done, hit the M as in man key, and then new collection, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it 3D objects. Oops, I didn't spell it right. So 3D objects. Click OK. And take a look at what I have here. Now, all my, my, my geometry is inside that one folder called 3D objects. On the right-hand side, you should, you should see an eyeball next to your, your objects folder. If I turn that eyeball on and off, that's visually turning off the assets. Making sense? Okay, now, we're currently looking at this in a standard 3D surfacing, right? It's just a, a plain view without textures. I want to be able to see potential lighting and textures. If I look at this icon, there's all the visual aspects in Blender. So if I go to the left, this is going to allow me to see this in this edge mode, right? If I go back to my, my standard shading mode, and if I want to see the x-ray where I can see through the objects, because if, if I'm going to work with objects on top of each other, I might want to see through them to see what's behind them, right? So this, this one, there's the one I have highlighted. Skip this one, but click on the square, two squares overlapping. You see, now they kind of, you can see through them, the x-ray X mode, which I think you're gonna, you'll find very handy. I just want you to be aware that it is there. Okay. All right, so, and I don't want to get too much into texturing just yet. But I'm going to go back to the standard shading mode, clicking that little that, that white circle inside the gray rectangle. And from here, I want to bring in the light. So the light's already there, so I'm going to click on it. All right, so I'm clicking on the light source. Um, and I'm going to also click on the icon that's just to the right of the standard shading mode. Um, more than likely, you see one more icon to the far right. Click it. And there you go. There's my 3D lights. So if I go to the light source, and let's bring it up a little bit. In fact, we'll bring it up higher. We'll bring it over to the side. Kind of hard to see. So if we go back to this texture mode, it's a sunlight. I 
I think this does work fine. I'm gonna come over here back to the render mode. And that's this icon, the last one to the right, is basically a rendering mode. You get to see how where the light's coming from and the direction that the shadows are gonna fall. Is that making sense? So if you go to the light and you, you click off the eyeball on the on right, this works just like the eyeballs in Photoshop and layer. Click off the eyeball, it all goes away. Object, objects are still there, it's just that there's no lighting to, to light them up. I am going to turn the eyeball back on. Okay, now the reason I showed you this is because we're going to build something. And we're going to use an image. And we're going to take that image and we're going to give it a plane, a 3D plane. Thus, images from plane and we're going to build a 3d you know um, object based on what's on that image we're going to build in the windows and the doors and stuff like that all right so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to get out of this rendering mode i'm going to go back to the standard shading mode there so make sure you do that now and this is where I need to do a little bit of a housekeeping. Um, I gave everybody a Google Drive site to, to download yesterday. I think you're the only one you probably didn't see it, but I'll make sure you see that today. And on that site were images. So I'm, I'm going to go and get that now. And you guys will have to, um, well, I'll give the link so you guys can go and actually download it. All right, so what I'm going to do is this. I want you to delete everything out of here. I'm going to turn off the x-ray mode so you can see everything here. And I'm going to click and drag around all my 3D objects. Hit X key, delete. And we're going to bring in an image in. So watch me first, um, and I'm going to show you where they all are. So I'm going to go open up my web browser. And I've given everybody a direct link to the Google Drive. And I think this may be it already here. So let me go to the proper account, which is, there we go. Verify it's me. Yes, it's me. For some reason, Google wants to verify everything. You signed in. Yep. Yes, yep. I don't know why it's giving me this error. Let me go to a different browser. I was working with... Um, Try this browser. There we go. All right. Um, this should be Cynthia. This should be this one here. I'm going to go back here. Go to the Blender user group. All right. There we go. Okay. So I gave you guys, I told you guys to download this Blender modeling class uh, brow, uh, um, um, imagery. I also ask you guys if you're coming to class to make sure that it's you bring it on thumb drive. But if you didn't, you can access it right now. Um, let's see what that link might be. So references. So what I want you to do is go to the West Hills Kalinga folder and go to the images folder. Okay, and you've got a bunch of images in here. So I'm assuming that everybody here in class probably needs a direct, direct link. Um, let me go get that to you, get that for you right now. All 
I'm gonna get to share uh, get the link and let me do this let me kind of pause the recording Go. Hitting the record button. Yay, recording now. All right, thank you for reminding me. All right, here we go. I'm going to shift A, go to the image because I'm going to bring an image in. I'm going to bring the image not as a background or not as a reference. I'm going to bring it in as a plane, an actual geometry that we want to bring in. I'm going to go get it where I had last left it, which is going to be my D drive. And I put it into my presentations folder. And inside the presentations folder, I have a West Hills. And I've got the images right there. Okay, there are all my images. And I'm going to scroll down until I find it. I went past it, I believe. There it is. Grab it. Import the images planes. And there it is. Now, we are working in this standard shading mode. I said that's what these little these dots are up here. I want to go to the one just to the right of the one shading mo shading mode. That allows that's your texture mode. That allows you to see the texture on your geometry. Is that making sense? Okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna alter this plane so that we're going to get three-dimensional shapes that the lighting and the environment is going to interact with. Well, yes. And I, can, I can hear you, David, in the background. I'm doing all right, you know? David, mute your microphone. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so when we come back from lunch, okay. we're going to alter this. Let me get, uh, the, David can't the seem to hear me, I don't think. Participants, and there's David, mute him. I can mute him. All right, so we're going to come back. We're going to use those techniques I've just taught you <clears throat> in terms of adding geometry and, 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 and extruding shapes out of the single plane now, this is going to be a very viable trick you're going to use in the in an actual um, compositing and in, in, in the 3D scenes where you're going to have layers of photographic imagery, but you're not going to build those objects. You're going to allow the photographic imagery to do most of the work for you, but we're going to add geometry where it needs to be added to give it a feeling that there's real 3D objects back there in the background, but it really isn't. After this, we're going to actually build something that's going to be completely 3D from scratch. All right? We're going to build a fire hydrant that we're going to place into the scene. So should we stop here and have lunch? Give me this looks. <laughs> So I'm going to pause the recording. Okay, the question is, is, once you set up Blender the way you exactly the way you like it, right? And of course, it'll be you know without this object sitting there. And I want every time I open Blender, I want that to come back to my default view that I like. You go to your File menu, Default, Save Startup File, click it. And then click Save Startup File again, and that'll save it. Great, Great question. All right, now I'm going to put in. I'm going to teach you a, a neat little trick. And I thought this would be a nice little trick to kind of show you, to kind of get you introduced, introduced to to um, modeling and blender and 
and it's, 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 a nice, it's a nice way to visualize how to break things up in patterns so that you can, you know, you can create successful through the objects. So sometimes you're going to have a background where maybe it'll be a background of a city. Well, would you would you rather model all those buildings in the city or maybe take a photograph and make portions of it three dimensional so it looks like it's an actual model city in the background? So what we're going to do is what we have here is an image sitting on, on a flat plane. But the fact that the image on a plane doesn't sell it because because this is flat. What we're looking at is is a shadow produced from a photographic image. There is no real 3D, um, no shapes in here. In other words, the hallways are not going back in. The windows portions are not sunk in. The ledges for the windows are not coming out, right? We're going to actually make that happen. This is a nice little cheat that you can use to make your backgrounds three-dimensional looking, but appear like they're more sophisticated than they really are. And this is a nice little way to kind of kind of get you introduced into um, um, introduced into into modeling. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna look at this scene and we're gonna just kind of use our imagination and split this up into some very simple shapes. So first of all, I'm looking at this thinking that okay, the first thing I'm gonna wanna I wanna break out from this scene is this. It's the concrete floor. Okay. Now, currently, I am in, I am in object editing mode. If I have to hold down the tab key. I'm currently in object editing. I want to go in here. I want to edit the actual geometry itself. So let me just come and share one thing because tomorrow we're going to get more into texturing, and I'm going to come over here and 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 click out of the modeling. Whatever, oh, you have the modeling tab is selected. What I want everybody to do is go over to one, two, three, four over to the right and click on shading. Okay, so what you're going to see is um, uh, these, these two windows here, and we're going to talk about this in more, deep, uh, more depth tomorrow. But if you hit the, the period key on the numeric side of your keyboard with your mouse over your um, your rectangular geometry, it'll, it'll zoom in. Or go ahead and use your command or controller or an alter, alter option held down together and zoom in. So what you're seeing is a background with your image. So the shading tab allows you to see a background with your image and then your actual image along with the actual texture nodes that's allowing you to see this texture. So if we look at the nodes down here at the bottom. This, this is what it's doing. The big green one <clears throat> is the actual engine that's producing, that's placing the image onto the geometry. This small orange one is the actual image. And if I zoom in close to it, storefront.jpg. Now, when we get into actually custom texturing tomorrow, you'll this will all make sense. Keep in mind, this is the image that's actually being plugged into the texture engine, and then both are being output. Let me go ahead and hit Command A. If you ever lose it like this, what you do is um, hit the A key for select all over here, and then hit the period key to bring it back. I accidentally deleted the image. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to hit Command Z. All right, it's there. It is. It's back. Okay. All right. Now on this node, you'll see two lines. The top line is a good. That's good. We're gonna keep that one. The bottom line we don't want. So all I want you to do is this: get in close to where it says alpha, where the bottom line is connected to. Take your cursor, place it on the alpha node. Click and hold and just drag it off and release your, your left click. That's all you need to do. So this is all you need to see.
This is your image plugged into the texture engine. And then this is your output telling you how is it going to look when you output it, which is what we're seeing. I'm not going to talk any more, or more about it than this. That's all I'm going to say. I just want you to be aware of what's going on now because when we come back tomorrow, we'll get to actually plug things in and show you how to put, put you know, like, like bricks on the wall and make it look like bricks or concrete on the floor or, or brick pattern concretes on the floor, make it look like they're actually bricks there, but where we're going to be using photographic textures from Photoshop to actually texture our objects. Does that make sense? All right. So at this point, what I want you to do is I want you to save everything. Okay. So go to your file menu, save as, save it to your, your thumb drive or your desktop, whatever you like. I'm going to save it back to my West Hills folder. And I'm going to call this one, um, I'm just going to call it building. Now, after you save it, get out of the shading tab or the shading room and go back to the modeling room over to three, four over to the left. So we're seeing this and we're going to model. So I want to, I want to be able to create something very quickly with a lot of, with photographic textures on it to fake it, to make it look like it's a full 3d building that we created. Okay. By the way, I went to Starbucks and got a green tea latte. Green, a matcha green tea frappuccino. You'll like it. It looks like mint, but it's not mint. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, ice cream, green tea, ice cream, delicious. What was it? You can't stand green tea? You love green tea? Oh, see, you got good taste. See, she likes green tea. What was that? That's really good for you. Very good. He's going to die early because he doesn't like green tea. <laughs> okay. Let's have some fun, guys. I want to make this into a three-dimensional three object. So take a look at this. I want you guys to talk to me about this image. What do you think we need to do? To make it look somewhat realistic in a three in, in a three D um, engine like like Blender. Very good. We can do what to the windows? Push the windows what? Out. I would push them in. If you look at the photograph, it looks like they're sunken in, right? What what else? Yeah. Okay. The Oh, okay, so the curves at the bottom, right down in here is what, is what one person in class just mentioned. Um, it looks like a little step, which we can actually um, um, correct. I think I'm getting close here. What else? So all these curves at the bottom here she was mentioning. The doorways, you said? Yeah. And the doorway should be even more sunken than the windows, right? It looks like the doorways go further back than the windows. Do we all agree on that? Okay. And it looks like this wall back here is probably sunken back from all this concrete texture. So we can fake that as well. Okay, so let's go to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is separate the concrete from the bottom. So um, make sure you get into edit mode. So if you are in object mode, you have to select your object first. Now take note that right over here on the right-hand side, the storefront is selected. Okay, that's good. That's what we want. Now go to edit mode. Go down the tab key, go to edit mode, because now we're going to be inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to start adding slices to start slicing up our image so we can create something visual here. So let's do this. Watch me and you get, you get to do it next. 
Did anybody remember the, the shortcut command for slicing? Very good. Control R. She's on top of it. So watch me. Control or Command R, if you have a Mac, is Command. And wherever you place your mouse, it happens that it, the slice is put perpendicular to that edge. So I'm going to put it over here to the left. Left click and hold, and it will. I can drag it. And I'm going to drag it right here at the bottom and then click it. And then once I get it there, I left click again, and that commits my changes. Now, do me a favor. On the left-hand side, make sure you have the transform icon selected right there. That one. Select that one. So get to this point. Do that now. Control R, create a slice that's going to separate the concrete flooring from the building. Keep it simple, just get to that point. And tell me when you're done. And that means everybody online as well. Didn't we agree that we need to separate out the, the windows next? Right? So watch me. You get to do it next. I'm going to look at not just the windows, but this little ledge around the windows. So I'm going to hit Command R once again. And I'm going to place this right at the bottom of that ledge and left click and release and set, set another one there. So I want this border area around the end windows to be um, included. Control R, add a slice right below the windowsill. Let's add yet another slight slight slice right above the window window sill to separate it out. Command R again. See, Command R. Um, my system is uh, is thinking. System's a little bit frozen there. There we go. Thank you. Command R. There it is. I placed it on the wrong side, so I'm hit Command Z, Command R, For some reason, let's pull this out over here, Command R, there we go, okay, there it is, right above that window seal like that, Command R again. Place the one just outside that little border area of the window. And I'm going to do one more Command R for this little area that's going to come out a little bit. Actually, it's two different areas. So I might be able to go ahead and afford putting more than. Put one there, and then one more right above there. So if you see what I did, right, I'm going to start separating out these areas in here. So if, say for example, you have an edge that is not quite right, you 
you didn't quite place it right. I'm going to show you a trick. So I'm going to go to Edge Editing Mode. That's number two key on the keyboard. If I select this edge, right, and if I, if I zoom out to make sure that entire, that entire edge is selected, okay, as you can see. If I want to slide that edge along the surface of the polygon, all you're going to do is hit double G, hit the G key twice, double G, and I can slide it. You don't have, you don't even have to left click, just, just move your mouse to slide it, then place it exactly where you want it, which I want it there, and then left click and I commence the changes. If I go to the next one up here, double G, place it where I want it, and then click and it's done. So. Now they're all placed exactly where I want them to be. Now, the one you lady in here, notice that along the bottom, we're going to want to kind of do some. You know, extrude out some geometry for the bottom portions of the um, of the buildings where, where they're making a connection to the concrete. So Command R, probably one there. I'm going to hit Command R, put another right about there. Command R. Okay, so I, I kind of messed up something here. So I'm going to get in close. Select the edge, double G, place it where I want it. Which one, I want that one there. Double G and slide it right about there. There we go. I notice a mistake I made, and in, it's a good one. So I want to show you how to delete these things. If I find that I edit one too many, I'm going to hit X on the keyboard. And what I want to do is I want to hit to dissolve the edges, not delete the edges but dissolve the edges. And then that way it, it you 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 get to you get to keep your 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 3D geometry but delete the edge. Now that's exactly what I want. Hit the A key is select all, right? I'm going to go to the edge editing mode. See what I'm doing. So I'm breaking this up into sections where we're going to extrude as well as um, sync in geometry. Because currently it's not, does not that does not have a, does not have that three dimensional feel. How's everybody doing? Are you there yet, or you give you a few give you a few minutes? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna come over and work with you on your computer. Let me um, um pause the recording real quick. Record. Let me let me do this here, and I'm going to um minimize that. There we go. Bring this on over. Let's get to Windows next. So what I want you to do is Command R. Let's see what's going on here. Oops. Okay. Undo that. Okay. Command R. And I've got something going wrong with my system. 
So I, I want vertical lines separating out the windows. Go ahead and do that now. Pull this on out. There it is. Vertical lines. Command R. Okay, so what I've done is I've included that little border. And this, this, this one's too far out here. So double G and I can slide it. Command R, click and drag it, get the outside here. Command R, let's like the outside of that there. Command R. Left click it, Command R. Just gonna pull this down so we'll see what we're doing. Command R, there it is. Command R. I'm just going to the outside of the window. Command R again. Let's go outline the doorway. Command R. Command R. Okay, say that again. All right, hold on just a minute. Let me just finish mine here real quick. There it is. Cool. Cool. There we go. I'm going to go help somebody out real quick. So I'm going to pause recording. So the, the trick here when working with um, edge, adding edges, is that wherever your mouse sits next, whatever edge that your cursor sits, sits, sits next to, it'll be perpendicular. So if I go to um, Command R and wherever I see my, see my cursor, when it intersects a line or an edge, it'll it'll be perpendicular to that edge. But notice that what Blender does is it place that, places that edge dead center the geometry. So if I go over to the bigger geometry here, see it, it puts it in dead center. Go to the, go to the horizontal is dead center. Just by placing it there. That is where it's going to start. Then you click and hold to drag it where you want it, release it, and click again to commit the changes. Was that helpful? Yeah, it's. I just don't know what's going on here. It's like something selected, or oh yeah, maybe that's it. I've selected a lot of edge in there. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so if you have problems, you get the escape key and start over again, but. Yeah, and also when I slide it into position, it stops at another line. Did I click on the wrong side of the line? Yes, you did. You clicked on the okay. wrong side of the line. I got you. Okay, yeah, I got it now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. Yeah, and, and those are the little gotchas that you need to learn about Blender. That's the way Blender works. So does, so if you, if you click on the opposite side of the, of the space that you want to be in, it's going to stop at that line that's that's that that's creating the border for that space. All right, so can I um, move on forward? How's everybody doing here? You guys are good to go? Okay, watch me right now. So all eyes up here. She's not watching. Okay, so watch me up here. Not like not not like watch me me that me, okay. I mean I'm cute and all that, but no, that's what you want. To Let's look at the screen, <laughs> okay. All right, so so here we go. Now we're gonna start extruding shapes. Watch me. 
I want to extrude the window. So, so far, I feel confident I've got my shapes in there. Okay. I'm going to look at this window seal one more time. Oh, oh, I'm missing something. Or am I? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Well, I kind of am, but I don't care at this point. I think I'm going to do it this way. Okay, watch. I'm going to go to number three, face editing mode. Okay. Click on that one. Hold the shift key down, click on that one. Holding the shift key down, click on this one. Okay, so my three big windows are selected, right? All right, here we go. I want a little bit of a border that's gonna kind of represent, it's not gonna totally, but kind of, that's all we need to do is, is, is to be close to good enough for government work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the I for inset. Now watch. I for inset. And I'm going to pull it in just underneath that. See that border of, of, the, of the photographic windows just underneath it about there. Okay. Um, and it's not to be perfect, just close to it. And then left click. And if I release this, in fact, here. Let me, let me go to the, the normal shading mode so you guys can visually see what I've done. So get out of this. Um, move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Get out of this textured mode. Go to this mode. You see what I've done? Is that making sense? Now, the last thing you want to do is this. I'm going to watch me one more time, and then I'm going to let you guys go to work. The last thing you want to do is I want to sync the windows in, right? Select this one. Select that one, multiple select, holding the shift key, multiple select, right? And all I'm going to do is this. I'm, 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 I'm going to turn it to the side like so. Let's turn back on the texture. Texture mode. Now watch this. What's the shortcut? Well, what command do we want to do now? Excellent. E for extrude. So watch. E key, boom, boom, boom. see? Isn't that cool? So I want, now I don't want to go in that far because the doorways are going to go further. So I want to, I want to go there just, I'm just, I'm just eyeing it at this point. Just about there and left click. And now if I, see, if I turn these off by clicking anywhere, it's starting to look three dimensional. Isn't that cool? I see the big smiles on everybody's faces here. Okay, that's cool. So if I turn off, if I get out of texture mode, see, that's what I've done. This is, and this is a legit technique in the real world. Whereas your job is to make a, like a sci-fi city background using maybe a bunch of cities that was given to you on the photograph. You can make simple planes, put all your images on the photograph and only extrude and, three, and, and make three-dimensional three the portions of the city that you feel is going to work and that, that'll sell the shot, right? So if I go back to my texture mode, and we, we're getting three dimensional. So we'll get to that point and then we're going to come back and do the doors. We'll record again. All right. So now, um, just very quickly, and I'm going to let, let you guys go back to work. Let's go grab the door. Remember, we, we have this for the door, but also we got this section. Right, and we also got this section. We got this whole sec. We got a bunch of them for the doors. So if I get in close, zoom in close, and if I take my cursor, I'm going to unclick, uncheck it somewhere else. Take it and click and drag a square all the way down to the bottom like this. It'll select all the areas that's going to represent that doorway that's going to go inside. I'm going to do the same thing here. Hold the shift key, drag all this area there. Now, um, that's wrong. I don't want this extra portion down here. So hold the command or control key to deselect that portion. Okay? So they both are going to be the same. Now, we want to extrude them in. We want to inset them in just a little bit to get that similar border. So watch. I... Pulling in about there. 
Huh. Let me take a look at this and see what's going to happen. No, nope, that's not working. I don't know why. Hold on a minute. Let's find out why. All right. Let's, let's do one at a time then since uh, it's giving me a hard time. Go ahead and grab this here. There it is. Now, let me see how much I can actually extrude. I'm going to inset. I for inset. Let's take a look at this. Oh, something just happened. Oh, this is really weird. Um, I'm in face editing mode. Come on. I've only been doing this a hundred times. I hit the I key there. Oh, what, was it? what was it doing before? I'm insetting it in just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the other door because I meant to do them at the same time, but the program was being a little funky on me today. So I'm going to go grab the rest of this down at the bottom. I inset it in like that. Left click. There it is. Okay. Now watch me. <clears throat> I want the doorway to, 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 to inset further in, right? More so than the windows, right? I just want those areas. Oh, this is something strange that just happened in here. Oh, I see what's going on. There. There we go. I was setting too much. There we go. Right above there. Now I'm gonna in, I'm gonna inset that further in. So watch. E key and take that further back, further back than the windows. Okay, see now, let's do the same thing for this one. I think that'll work. I think I've got one more to, to, to select. There we go. Now I'm going to inset that in further back as well. E key for inset. Take it further back and that'll work. Okay, get to that point. So, all right. So the question is, wait a minute. When I do this inset, watch me guys. I want you to watch me this one. I promise to let you go back to work. The kids are just like going to town here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say several of these, right? You want to inset this one whole piece. One person mentioned that each individual one inset. So if I hit the I key and do this, right? Each individual one insets. If I left click and release, this panel comes up here. If you go down over here in the panel toward the bottom, I can go individual, which means the individually are offset, as you can see right here, as I get in closer, or turn off the individual and I'll treat the whole piece as one piece. I forgot to set that those intersections in there. That's why it's doing this. All right. So that's well, I, I don't I don't get that panel when I when I'm working with this. Well when uh, you, how do you bring the panel up. Well, you have to left click. I left click. Right. The panel should pop up there. It'll, it'll be truncated down like this. Right. You got to come down to the bottom left, hit that little triangle to the left, and it'll pop up. Yeah. Okay. Undo. I'm, I'm going to undo mine. Right. Go back. So if I hit the I and then I hit left click to commit changes, that panel should automatically show up. If not, I'm going to have you share your screen. Yeah, it, it's not coming up. Okay, very Sorry. good. Let me let me take a look at your screen. So let me um, stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm going to stop share. And I'll share your screen so everybody can see your screen. While I take a sip of my green tea, matcha green tea latte. Yummy. You want to make me happy, get me matcha green tea latte. Just saying. So tomorrow, you know what I want, right? You know what? 
and I was in a school and get your like into your faculty levels. I know not a lot of people like it. Ah, so tomorrow you know I like it. <laughs> oh, they they do strawberries mixed in. Okay, if you give me more strawberries mixed in, I'll be really happy. Um, are you sharing your screen? Oh no. Um, how do I do that? Go to go to your um your Zoom interface and go to share on the very bottom. It should be highlighted green. Uh, zoom interface. Okay, yeah, share screen. And I'm gonna do that. Okay, there we go. Bing, that looks looking good. All right. Okay, you know what? You got that very bottom one selected that should not be selected. That's your problem. So hold so don't don't move it. Just just um hold the there you go. That's what you should so you have one one more, one more selected, one more right there. That's it. Okay. Now I for inset. Drag. There you go. Okay, now left click. There it is in the bottom left, right in front of you, buddy. No, okay, you started I, I moving. Saw it for a second. Yeah, you, you. The reason you lost it is because you moved it. The minute okay. you move, you can't move it. You got. You used the light wave. In light wave, you got to left click to do things. And Blender, you don't. You let the mouse. You just okay. let the mouse hover. So, All right, so I let me reselect. You got it. <laughs> Okay. All now right. Left click. That, inset, no, I right. inset. No left click. Just I. Okay. Now move right. your mouse. Don't click. Okay. Okay. Go on. Move. No, the other, the, way, the other way. The other way. The other way. The other way. Right there. Okay. Right there. Or, or, or just right. for example, oh, left okay. click once. Now go immediately. Drag your mouse over. Open it up. Uh, okay. Excellent. Okay. Un uncheck individual. Yeah, and then do it again. And just undo that. Hey. I. There it is. Don't I'm do. Still yeah. Well, well, no, no. Don't do it too. You went too far. You okay. dragged too far. Only it's only right there. Up there. Yeah, I got to keep it up there. It's still doing individuals. I don't know why. No, um, it's not. I think you've got some extra extra stuff selected in there that shouldn't be selected. Yeah, I may have extra geometry somehow. Yeah. Uh, there, right there. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's weird. It's in, not in, in turbo? No, sorry. There must be extra geometry somehow I, I can cut in there. Yeah, you got some extra stuff you cut in there, and, and it's overlapping one right, another. Well, I, I get the concept, so thank you. Okay, you're uh, welcome. I'm going to unshare. Unshare, okay. Unshare. And I'm going to go okay, share my screen. Here, and you can maximize your your blender there too, and make it a lot easier for you. Well, yeah, I just wanted to. There you go. That's not okay. better. So you are sharing. Stop share. Okay. Stop share. Cool. Now right, I'm going to share my screen. Cool. Boom, 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 boom. Share. Boom. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So get to that point. Do the doorways too. You got to be careful the extra geometry that you put in there because it's going to react to everything. Blender definitely does what you tell it to do, not what you want it to do. Okay, so I think we're ready to go to the, the window the window ledges here. There's the little windowsill ledges here. There's little tricks for that. I've got for that. I think will be helpful. You guys want like an extra couple of minutes to finish up? Okay, yes. Everybody says yes. So I'm going to pause recording, give you guys a little more time to finish up. Recording. So I want everybody watching me. Don't play on your computer. I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys a new tool. Well, it's not a new tool to Blender, but new tool in terms of what I'm teaching you. Um. All right. So if you look at this whole shape. We got the basic windows, right? So if I turn this to the side a little bit, or even if I get out, get out of the texture view, get out, get out, let me get out of this X-ray view, okay? You get to see I've sunken in my windows. Watch me. I've sunken in my windows, and I've sunken in my doors. But if you look at the overall shape of the piece, this is not the shape of my structure, right? If we go back to the, um, we go back to the texture editing view 
and make that a habit, guys. Just go back and forth between texture and, and non-texture, right? It'll help you. If we take a look at the texture mode, look at, look at the shape of the building. What this is is a concrete structure that's a little bit more sophisticated around the edges. Let me kind of bring this back here, go to my home button if I, if I get zoomed off somewhere. I can select all these hit, and hit the period key on the, on the numeric side that will zoom in closer. If we take a look at this, this looks like a mantle for a fireplace almost in terms of the shape, right? This is not a rectangular structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out that shape. And then we also have the sidewalk, right? Is this sidewalk coming straight down or is it coming out at us? That's what we got. We have to deal with that next. OK, so watch me first. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to shape this structure here. And what we're going to do is we're going to share with you a new another tool. And it's called the knife tool. It allows you to cut out your shape. So I'm going to start right down here in the bottom. I'm going to hit the, the first letter of the word knife is what? K. K. Hit the K key. See that? Right? I'm going to come right down here. Click and release. Click and release. Click and release. It's like using the pen tool in Photoshop, right? Click and release. Click and release. Click and release. Click and release. It's going to come all the way up. Um, I'm going to um, shift and alt held down together while I'm in the tool that allow you to navigate around. Release, release, shift and alt. It goes back to knife. Click and release. Click and release there. Click and release there. It's exactly like using the pen tool in Photoshop. I'm going to go to here. Click and release. Come to the side. I'm following the edge. Is that making sense, everybody? I'm following the edges to there, then come on out to there. Um, that's not what I want. I want to undo that. That's what I want. Huh. There. And then up. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. I'm going to come around. To the opposite side, um, I'm a little confused here. Let me kind of hit my home key. Okay. And the reason I'm confused is because I went too far. Okay. See what I did? Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. All right. Command Z. I want to go to th there now over to the top. So you got to be careful where you. There. Okay. So go to the very edge here. I'm going to zoom in close. Down, down. I'm just going to just do a basic structure. Go down to the very bottom. There, down. And I believe it's down to here. got to be careful with your navigation. Now come over, and I'm going to close it to there. And then hit Enter on the keyboard. See, and what I've done is I've made these shapes. Oops, sorry. Once I've made that shape, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select all these shapes start with the ground 
and take your time with this one. Go to the outside walls. I'm holding the shift key down as I select. See? Grab that whole top section. Um, I want the, the shift key. I made a mistake there. The shift key, I want to add to this. There, see? It's easier for me to select the background. I did it again. Shift key, Mr. Burns. There we go. All right, see it? So I've selected that shape on the inside. So if I turn it to the side, guys, right? So I can see how the depth is, how, how this is going to extrude inwards. I can hit the E key and extrude that back. I'll go back a little further, click and release. See? So if I go back to this mode, see? It's a fast way of creating sophisticated backgrounds that's going to sell you on the idea that they're actual 3D objects that you detailed and you really didn't. So if I turn back on the texture, you did a pretty good job. So I want you to get to this point, and then we're going to move on further. we got 15 minutes before break, so go ahead and finish that up. I'm going to um, pause recording. Recording. We are back from break. So all eyes up here for now. So I want to do some things that's going to help sell this piece even further. And again, what I'm doing isn't going to make it, it's going to be perfect, but it's just, just to you know, make a point. First of all, I have those window ledges here, right? So if I come around to the edges. If I double click on the edges, I should be able to select the, the, the window seals. And I'm going to go to every one of them. And if I put, if I make sure, I'm making sure I'm in face editing mode. And if I put my mouse in between the two adjoining edges, I should be able to select the entire loop. All right, so I got that loop. I have this loop. I'm going to go to the next one and target this loop. Oops, wrong one. And then control. There we go. See what I've done? And I want to get those window seals to stand out a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull it out. Whenever I'm going to extrude something, I always kind of like turn the geometry to the side just so I can see how this is going to look look from an angle. E key for extrude and just pull it out. Just, just, that's, about, that's all I want to do, just right about there. And then click. And if we come over to the side, you see? Okay, so see how, see how simple these shapes are? Now, we could round off these edges, and I can talk about that briefly. And, um, but before I do so, I want to get the concrete. The concrete, now I'm, I'm, I'm noticing something else. When I extrude it in a little bit, it created this extra piece of geometry around the around the borders. So if I double click this here, it selects all that border around the outside. So when I extruded this back, it 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 left that edge there. I don't want that anymore. So I'm going to hit the X key and then um, click on delete faces right there. Now. Yours may come up as like, like a, a menu that just drops down straight down. I have a setting set inside my preferences for doing the um, the pie menu, but just click delete faces. Go on and do that to yours now. So if you have those faces now, now if you take a look at mine, the faces are gone. Now it's going to be a flat face. 
as I anticipated it would be. And the whole idea for this example <clears throat> is not to create sophisticated 3D shapes. It's to create simple 3D shapes and allow the photograph to sell the piece. That's telling a story. That's why we do this. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes and let you get to that point. I'm going to pause the record. record. All right, here's where it starts to get fun, get a little more fun. I want that concrete sidewalk to come out at us, which means that the concrete sidewalk that I have here, I want to take it from here and put it out to the front and stretch it out coming toward the camera. All right, because right now it's, it's, it's sticking straight down. That's not what sidewalks are doing. Sidewalks are going to be parallel with the bottom of your, of your architecture. So you're walking onto it to come into the door. So, neat little trick here is I'm going to select all this geometry right there. Now, if you notice, everything that we're doing the photographic image is basically tacked on the geometry. That's how we can do this. Once I select this one, I want everybody watching me and not playing. Once I have that texture, I want to duplicate this texture. The way you duplicate it is Shift D. So watch me. Shift D is going to get attached to my mouse and if I right click it'll reset it back where it is All right but if I take my rotation tool I'm going to be in my transform tool take the transform tool if I hold the control key down and grab the the green circle here I want to rotate it out toward the camera if I hold down the control key it gives me 10 degree increments Right, I'm going to kind of get rotated, come to the side. I'm going to, oops, I don't want that rotation. I want the, there we go. Something like, there we go. That's good enough. Now, bring it up to the door. Bring it out. And all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make it larger. So I'll bring it to the side, put it's not what I want. I want to get the little red arrow, pull it out. Now, get the red square and just make it longer like this. And just push it back in to the piece. So this is important because we're going to put something on top of this. Another, another 3D object that we're going to create. So that it actually it's going to interact with the scene. Right now, this is kind of like a a semi. This is all 3D, but it's all it's fake. It's fake because if I turn off the textures, you have open spaces all back here. So what we what we've done is we created a stage. Because in Hollywood, it's not building full structures most of the time. It's just building little you no know, facades, and that's what we're doing. Is we're building a facade, and the reason we're building a facade is so that if you have to quickly actually build a background for for a shot, then you don't have to actually do all the geometry accurately. Just do something very simple like this so that you can map the photograph over it to sell the shot. That's all you're doing. That's literally all you're doing. Okay? And we're just helping sell the shot by taking that concrete and duplicate it. Select it first, duplicate it. Which puts it um, gives makes it its own separate object, and then use your transform tools to rotate it and stretch it out, so have a little space to set to set something else on top of it. 
So get to this point. I'm going to pause recording. I'm going to turn on the record. Let's take a look at everything I've done so far. I suppose I could do a little more if I wanted to. Remember these little areas up here? Um, these little areas right in there that we had um, targeted. And what I could do... Let me see if I can actually... Yeah, maybe I can do that. I'm going to put in... Um, if you take a look at this from the side, this actually bevels out a little bit. In order to get me, in order for me to accomplish that, Command R, and just add another line right in there. Let's see what it's doing here. Oops, hate it when it does that. Go to Home. I want to just kind of inspect this here. I'm going to make sure that comes all the way to the edge. So, Command R. I wonder. Let's see. I was hoping that this was going to loop all the way around, but I don't think it is. So, I'm going to undo it. Go. But my my thought process here is, can I get this portion of the three D object to kind of to bow out a little bit? Um, and I think I can. Not particularly. Go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take a look at some of the side. I'm gonna come over here and turn off. There we go. Turn off the texture. I think I'm gonna leave it this way. I mean, I, I was contemplating on add, adding a little bit more detail. I think it'll be safe bet just to kind of leave it that way for now. All right. Now let's add some lights in here. To do so, we're going to go to Object Mode. Tab key, Object Mode. Okay. And we're going to light this. So I'm going to teach you a little trick here. If we come over here on the right hand side of our menu, we can minimize this there. We come right up here on my 3D assets. I've got my storefront and the camera, but I do not have a, a light that I can see. I'm going to hit Command S or Control S. Do this, control S. I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to save this. Do this again. I'm hitting, I'm, I'm, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm hitting too many buttons at one time. So, command S and save as. Cool. I want to go back and save this into my D drive. Well, I'm thinking if I take my my drives aren't coming up. I'm kind of taking. This text is so small, it's hard for me to really see it here on a second. And that's the problem when I'm sharing my screen capture with with um, uh, with the digital projector. Is that my interface is so small. So I'm trying to squint my eyes in there and see these things. Okay, there we go. All right, I think I can kind of 
Yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll, we'll stick to the D drive. I'm going to come down here and go to my um, presentation files. There we go. And let's go find my my presentations. That's in Summit. I got to go back. There we go. Uh, presentation files. I'm going to go down here to kind of that little West Hills College. There it is right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save it there. So I'm architecture. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to make a new folder. Right click, new folder. And in this new folder, I'm going to call this one uh, tutorials. There we go. And I'm going to reference images. It's not what I wanted to do. Colleges, go back up. There we go. Tutorials. Okay, architecture. The text is so tiny. I can probably bring up my, my resolution of my screen so I can see this a little bit better. Okay, that's done. So let's go bring in the light sources. I don't have any lights here. You may have lights in your scene, but we're gonna we're gonna light lighter object. Now this is what this is what why we need to do it. Currently, I'm in a texture mode, right? When we're modeling, we're in the standard shading mode like this. If I want to know what this what this is gonna look like if I render it, right? To do a final render. The, 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 the node, the, the, the image to the far right, right? That's your render. So click it, and this is what you're getting. The reason you're getting this is because the light source is, um, is, is there's no light source in there. I need to bring in the light source. I'm going to bring in the sunlight. How do you think we do it? Okay, so speak up a little bit. Say that again. Next to object mode, add or what? Shift A. All right, Shift A. Any 3D abs, um, um, objects is how we do it. Shift A, light, add in a sunlight. And look, it's starting to light up a little bit. Right, where is the sunlight? So if I pull this out, the sunlight's in dead center. If I pull it off to the right, if I pull it up, see that there? This little this little yellow dot is a direction that the that the that the lighting is, is pointing in, right? So if I grab that little dot and point it over here, it starts to light up. All right, here's a trick. I'm going to teach you guys a trick that will make your lighting a little bit easier for something like this. I'm going to add into something that's called an empty. And all an empty is is a, is a, um, a 3D object that will never render. It's just there to get to get other objects in Blender to do something with it. What I want this 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 empty to do is to get the light source to always point toward it toward it at all times. So what? Watch me here. I'm going to go to Shift A and empty, and I'm going to add an empty. I'm going to use arrows, and the empty is going to be placed right here in the dead center. See the arrows there? X, Y, and Z. That's my empty. It's just there to be like a, like a pointer. Now, what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to tell this light source way up here. Let's pull it on. Take this light and tell it to always point toward that empty. In fact, we'll rename the empty. If I come right up here to the top, there's the empty. If I double click on it, just like in Photoshop, I can rename it. I'm going to call it empty lights. Okay. Once that's in there, I'm gonna go select the light, and I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give the light a command where it always points at that empty. So, for example, 
I'm going to take it and put it way back over here just for now so you can see what's going to happen. If the light is selected, now I'm going to start introducing you to some modifiers, which we're going to get more into tomorrow. But over here on this little section here, you see this little vertical menu of icons. If I go to the third one from the bottom, if I click on this one, third one up from the bottom, this is going to allow me to add in what's called a constraint. And that constraint means that you're going to tell that light, you're going to constrain that light source to do something towards something. And the constraint that I'm going to use, if I drop this down, is going to be track to. In other words, tell this light source to always track to something. So if I click it, right, now watch what's going to happen here very closely. So if you look at where the, the lighting is pointing somewhere back here, right? It's pointing way off over here in the distance. If I go to the target for track two, what am I going to track it to, guys? The empty. So click on the, the little box there. You're going to track two empty lights. Watch what happens when I click it. All right, um, light source. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Track two. That's interesting. Hold on a minute, guys. Track two. I've only done this a million times. So why is it acting up on me now? So empty lights. All right, there's no reason why this should not be working. Um, I'm going to select it. Selected. Let me just delete it. We'll do it again. I'm going to target the sun. There we go. Now it's pointing somewhere different. I don't know what happened there, but target the, the sun. You have the same problem? Shouldn't be doing that. Um, go to my constraints. Go over to track two. Track two, empty lights. There it is. It did it right there. I'm going to chalk that one up as a bug. Now, you see how it's pointing to it at all times? Watch what happens when I move this around. See? No matter where I put it, it points to that empty. Is that making sense? It points to that empty. Hey. I'm just come down and say, hey. Yeah, hi, welcome. Yeah, everything's going very, very well. Cool. Um, and then I want to show you this. Yeah. That's her sign up. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, and I know you guys wanted this uh, mailing list. Sorry guys who are online, just the uh, the dean walk in real quick. Give, give me a minute. Um, um, so I'm really going to want these guys for your mailing list. Oh, yeah. So I'll make sure I'll send that to you tonight. Oh, perfect. Okay. okay. Cool, man. Great. Well, I'll just come by and see, say hey. Yeah. See it's great. It's so they're, they're learning Blender 3D. Mm -hmm. And um, we've just built, showing the dean here, we just built this. Uh, I'm teaching them how to light it right now. But we just built this uh, 3D object. <laughs> And we're just, I'm showing them how to light it. So guys, when you track to it, like when I select the light source, no matter where you uh, drag the light to, I'm going to drag it to the front. It'll always point to this. And you see the shadows coming down now in the doorways. So I'm going to select this here. There we go. See that we built that. You see the shadows coming in. And we're going to bring other objects. Now, starting to look more, more realistic, right? Now that there's actual shadows coming in there, um, it looked kind of funky with the photographic imagery, imagery but once you um, start to go to the light source, let me kind of go, come up here and do this real quick, and increase the, um, not the influence, but I want to go over here to the light source. There we go. Um, the intensity, see? It's going to start giving you a little bit better 
realistic point of view. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and then let you guys play. So once again, you are in rendering mode. So you're getting a full render as you move around. So take note that as you move around, the scene is being re-rendered and it's fast. It's very, very fast. And if I want to intensify the light source, for example, I tell you what, let's do this. Um, just watch me here real quick. I'm, I'm going to kind of give you an example. Um, if I tab key, go to object mode, all right? So I'm not in editing mode, we're in object mode. Let's bring in another object. Let's say shift A. Let's bring in a, um, make a garbage can, make a cylinder for garbage can. Hit the S key. See that? Bring it down. Push it down. See the shadows interacting with it already? Um, I'm going to just pull it out here. S key, make the garbage can smaller, something like this. Okay. Um, we're going to talk more about uh, these modeling details in just a little bit. I'm going to hit the tab key, go over to the edit mode. Let's use what I taught you today. Um, I'm going to go grab that, that bottom surface. Okay. Pull it down. There are shortcuts for this. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Let it touch the ground. Okay, so we said the garbage can is going to be about that high, right? So we got to make an inside for the garbage can, right? What, what should I do? Talk to me. Control. Is that what I want to do, guys? Control R? Control R is add in another loop. What was that? Oh, the extrude. The extrude, but watch. Select the surface. I for inset to get the edge of the get the edge of our right. Get the edge of our um, garbage can. Click it. Now what do I do? Then the extrude. Then I extrude. That's right. I'm going to show you a trick. Go to X-ray view right here so I can see the inside it. Hit the E key to extrude, you see? And I can see in the inside. Actually, is it doing it? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click it there. Yeah, it's there. It's an X-ray view. You can kind of see where it sits at the bottom. Okay. I'm going to go back to the standard shading mode. There's my garbage can. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to round off these edges a little bit. So I think what I could do is I can just double click it to select these edges. Anybody remember the shortcut for bevel? Control B. Control B. Control B. Pull it. See? I don't want that many, so I'm going to scroll back a little bit. And I've got a weird shape that's kind of making here. Something like this. I don't think I like this, what it's doing here. So I'm going to hit Command Z to go back. What I'm going to do instead is this. I'm going to go over here, hit the number two key, and select only the edge. I'm going to go select the, only the edge from the other side. What I'm going to do is create what's called a chamfer, which is basically means bevel the edges only. Before I was I was beveling all the faces. Let's just bevel the edges only. Control B. See, that makes more sense. Let's have a little bit of a rounded edge for for by adding more geometry, we can start to shape it a little bit more. Now, when we do our fire hydrant tomorrow, it's going to make a lot more sense. We're going to do a fire hydrant tomorrow. And we're going to put it into the scene. So once I'm going to go back to. Let's see here. Let's go back. Shift object mode. Got it. OK. Go back to our render mode. There we go. See. Now I have no texture on top of this garbage can. So we're only seeing it as a gray shape. But you're getting the point.
is interacting with the lights. So you can have a highly sophisticated background or, or an image of a background, edit some detail into it to, to make the sell the piece, and then actually bring in more geometry to make it uh, look, look a lot more believable in terms of a 3D space. Is that making sense? Okay, so that's it. We're done with class. I want to leave this time for questions and answers. Um, good, I did it. Any questions from anyone online? I, I have an unrelated question. In your uh, intro to modeling class in August, is that going to be just 10 to 12? Oh, oh, that's what, yeah, that, that was the five-week class. Right, the five-week class. Yeah, we, two we, hours that's every right, Sunday? two, yeah, every Sunday is two hours every Sunday. Okay. All right, that's so, fine. so, so basically, I'm going to give you homework. You got a week, a week to work on your homework. <laughs> okay, I, I got you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and though, and the, and that class is, is going to be solely Blender, but it's, it's going to be a lot more in-depth. Don't worry, we got you, you. You have not learned enough yet. I've only taught you a little. You can learn a lot more. Anybody else has questions? Okay, so Debo, are you okay? Maybe she's not there. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going, oh, they're, they, they're, okay, good, cool. All right. Um, so what I'll do is I'll email everybody the link. I'm going to get this rendered. In fact, I'm going to stop recording here in a minute. We're going to, I'm going to get this rendered and then I'll send everybody the link to the recording and you can watch this tonight or something to prepare for tomorrow's class. Okay, that's it. Thank you for being here. So we'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. sharp. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see, go to my recording here. There it is. And...